God, I love this place. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the month of freedom and power. And I want to talk about that today, and we're going to do a little bit of technique, a little bit, and get a real feel for what's going on in our lives. We talk about it a lot. I've got freedom, I've got power, I've got all of this. And I found that we use words that make things okay with us, that justify them. We use words that don't trigger us anymore. And I was going through the Science of Mind uh, textbook and looking up freedom, and Ernest is talking about bondage, and of course, my, I went like that. <laughs> That's a trigger word for me, bondage. Ooh, ooh. And I thought about that. Okay, why is that bothering me? Why does that trigger me? What, why did that give me shivers? It was a physical sensation. And I started thinking, well, what's bondage mean to me? Bondage means enslavement. Bondage means to me no power. It feels like being tied up. It feels constrained. It feels dark, uh, loveless. No color. I was getting all these things, and well, no wonder it triggered me if that's what it means to me. So I was looking at how he talked about it as an opposite to freedom, that we're going from bondage to freedom. And I thought about how we use things today. We talk about, well, we talk about childhood patterns. We talk about uh, habits, how I was trained, what my thought process is, but none of those words trigger. We've made it nice. We've given the things that hold us back, nice descriptions and nice words, so we can live with them. It's okay if they're nice words, it's not a bad thing, right? The bad things are over there. The bad things are in another country, another world, the other side of town, the other side of the tracks, but they're not here. So we're gonna do a little, a little thing right now where we really feel what bondage feels for us. And then we're gonna talk about what, what that means. So if everybody will close your eyes, and try not to hide from it. Please feel it as best as you can. So just picture yourself sitting in like a dark room. So you can't really see what's going on around you. It's, it's dark. Now you can barely see this like scary figure coming in and this figure like duct tapes your mouth, wraps rope all around you and ties you real tight. So feel your body, pull your elbows in close to your body, pull your knees together, feel yourself getting tight, make yourself tight, constrained, feel that. Feel that how tight you get? You feel how you're not breathing right? You can't feel the energy flowing through you? You're really wrapped in this bonds. Really feel that. Does it start to feel a little scary? Think of that. Feel it. Do you have any power? You don't have any power. Duct tape's over your mouth, you can't talk. No one's gonna hear you. You're wrapped so tight you can't move, so you're not going to be able to protect yourself. You're not going to be able to write a note or leave a message. You're powerless. When we're in bondage, it's past enslavement. We're powerless. Feel that. Feel that. Now just slowly allow that all to just drop away. Allow your body to breathe again. And when you're ready, come back into the room. How did you feel, Stella? Very constricted, and um, it was frightening. Frightening. Yeah. Did you have any power? I, I couldn't help but have a little inner power. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the frightening, there was a part that held you. Mm-hmm. Okay. John, how did you feel? I couldn't get in the body. I was outside the body all the time looking at it. So. <sighs> I was free. Sorry. <laughs> Alan? Uh, probably the opposite of what you think. Yeah, my body was bound, but I was free. My mind my mind that my mind controlled the me, my body did not control me. Okay. Did you have your hand up, Chris? Oh, I thought you had your hand up. No. I won't put you on the spot, but if you have something to say, you can say it. Just no? just it felt uh, tight, uh, felt uh, pressed in. Uh, closed off. I think if we were in it for a long time, we'd all feel scary. Now the part about out of the body is a running from it. So we're not in the 3D world, we're not connected here, 
we're not living this experience. So these are the things we do to survive. We run from it. I've worked with more clients who have, have out-of-body experiences and watching what happened to them because that way they didn't feel, they felt safer. We have a friend who was on the other side so much she lives there most of the time because that's where it's safe for her and how it looks. But what I want you to understand is this is what we do to ourselves every day of our lives. This is how we live, but we don't acknowledge it. And this is how we abuse ourselves. This is how we sabotage ourselves. This is how, even though we talk about freedom, we don't allow ourselves freedom. And I want you to understand that everything is pretty nice. When you get down to the core of what we do to ourselves, it's ugly. It's very ugly. It's very powerless. It's very dark. It's a complete lack of love and a separation from source. So I want to talk about how we do that. And to me, there are three main ways that we do it. We do it through the little voice in our mind that drives us crazy and second guesses us and talks to us all the time. How many times has that voice done something to you? You don't look right. You didn't answer that right. It's so busy being negative, you go into a job interview and you're nervous and upset and say stupid things and the mind doesn't work right because the voice was telling you all the time down there that you couldn't do this. You want to go to school and you're telling yourself you've been told your whole life you're stupid so you can't get grades on the test and you can't study. You have all these things going on, the voice. You can't do this. You're going out to perform and then you're stuttering and the words won't come because you're so nervous and so uptight and so in bondage to the voice and what it's been telling you, you can't do it. We become enslaved to that voice and once again we're powerless because we're giving it to something outside of our connection to source. We talk about our childhood. So the second big thing is the patterns of our lives. What are our patterns? How do we react? What triggers us? What do we do? Again, something outside of us. Your sister says something, or your brother says something, or your parent says something, or something happens in a relationship, and instead of that, reacting about what's going on in the relationship, you're reacting to what mom or dad said to you when you were a child. All these ways we're trained, whether it's from our environment, our social class, our religion, whatever it was, we have all these things that we were trained to do and trained to react. And they're subtle. We don't think about them. We talk about prejudices. We all have them, whether we admit to it or not. They're there, whether it's for food or clothes or how people react. I can give you a prime example. It's my, one of my sisters and my grandkids. She's constantly reading their Facebooks. And it's a different world, and they mean different things. And you don't know if they're illiterate or if they're short, shorting the words, you know, or if it's their new dialect. You don't know if they're being crude or if it's lyrics to a song. There, it's a different world, but yet we're, we're using our patterns, our expectations, our thoughts, the way we were brought up, to try to relate with this so there's no communication, right? So again, we're bondage. We're, again, we're powerless. We can't even talk to our children and grandchildren. The generation gap is gone, like, way beyond the generation gap. It's a whole new world out there for these kids. And then we have expectations. So we've got thoughts, patterns, and expectations. We hold ourselves in bondage these ways expectations that others have for us, expectations that the voice has for us, all of it, again, powerless because it's all out here. The more that we give in to this, the more that we're separated from source, the more we don't love ourselves because we keep punishing ourselves over and over and over. If your parents have told you you're stupid, or you didn't do well in school, or you followed. I had a sister who, I have two sisters, and one part of the year, they're the same age. The older one did really well. She's talented. She has all these gifts. The younger one is just as talented in her way and just as smart, but she never felt that way because she was always expected to be like the other one. The teachers in school expected her to do the same thing. Well, she was different. <coughs> She's a healer. The other's an artist. What's, you know, it's different, it's night and day. You can't compare apples and oranges. But it was very hard for her coming up in the world and achieving what she wanted because of the expectations that had been put on her and how she reacted.